Yo, 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 what it do? Welcome to another episode of the Task Cast live from Dubai. I'm your host, Kareem. You guys know my partners, Timmy and Ali. How are you guys doing? Yeah, very well. What about you, Karim? Doing fine, thank you. Timmy? Hey, Karim. I'm always loving being here. So. Yeah, yeah. What are we, what's, what are we going to talk about today? I don't know, but are you feeling a little out of place? <laughs> yeah, I am. Uh, I think there was a little bit of a wardrobe malfunction <laughs> <laughs> discussion. I thought we were going traditional. <laughs> well, Ramadan is coming up in a couple of days. So, yeah. you know, this will be the first episode that we released in Ramadan. Sure. So originally we had talked about everybody wearing the kondora, as they call it here, the galabeya, the dishdasha. Yeah. And last minute. We were like, ah, no, nah, scratch that. But Timmy didn't see the message. Uh, and so here he is in his condor. But you look, you look amazing, man. You look Thanks, amazing. Man. I think this is the first time I see you wear that. What condoras? The condora, yeah. Yeah, look, on Fridays, um, I actually try to wear it as long as I can. You know, usually from, from uh, Juma, you know, before Juma, which is the Friday prayers that every Muslim is obligated to go to. And I'll wear it up every until... Every Muslim man. Every Muslim man. Yep. But some women go. Um, and I try to wear it up until, let's say, I might be going out that night. Got you. But I have seen you do it. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, you no, go I out it. with it. No, I love it. I love yeah. it. I wear it all the time. I yeah. wear it all the time. Do you yeah. enjoy wearing it? Actually, I do. Yeah. And uh, the climate's perfect for it. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, you know, and I'm comfortable. Here in, in Dubai, you can wear it um, without anyone staring at you. You know, when I was in Sydney and I would wear it. You know, you get stared at. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for what sure. You, Ali? Yeah, I mean, uh, I wear it. Do they make one long enough for you? <laughs> <laughs> so obviously mine was custom made, but pretty good price uh, in Al Barsha. So um, I wear it here and there. Mostly like Timmy, I try to wear it on Fridays. Um, but generally I'm in the casual clothing. Yeah. <laughs> How about when you wore it on, in, like, did you ever wear it in Australia? Uh, no, never. No, never. Yeah. I'm just too embarrassed. Like I... You know, I'm tall enough as it is, so I get enough looks. The yeah. last thing I need is more looks because it's I'm wearing the It's understandable. The embarrassment thing is definitely understandable. Uh, it, I, I don't wear it that often in the States, but I will wear it to Tarawiyah and Friday. Tarawiyah has the nightly prayers during Ramadan, yeah. and I'll wear it to Jama sometimes, depending on what I have to do before or after. But one time after Tarawiyah, my wife had texted me, can you stop and get some milk? <clears throat> and so I stopped at a grocery store in our area called Food Lion. And uh, the cashier's like probably like 18 year old, 17 year old guy. And I'm wearing, I think it was like black with like red trim. It's like a gangster yeah. dish, honestly. <laughs> and he was like, uh, he was like, hey man, did you just come from Comic Con? <laughs> And I was like, excuse me. He was, he was like, he was like, your costume. And I, I died laughing. And I was like, no, man. I was, well, like, true story. I was like, no, man. This is like the traditional, you know, dress or whatever. And I had to explain it to him. And he had a good laugh after I explained yeah. it to him. But uh, so yeah, how are you guys feeling about Ramadan coming up? Yeah, really excited. You know, um, uh, you always worry about you know <laughs> how long you have to fast for, and then all of a sudden the next Ramadan. Um, is around the corner and you just look forward to it. It's exciting time of the year. You know, um, it's, you know, the time of the year where, you know, we stop, for, we stop eating and drinking from sunrise to sunset. And it's just a beautiful time of the year in general. Technically from dawn, dawn to sunset. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Correct. Very cool. Very cool. How about you, Timmy? What are your feelings as no, Ramadan I is coming look, up? I always look excited. and You always look excited, but how do you really feel? <laughs> <laughs> I am always excited when uh, Ramadan kicks in. Really? Um, actually, and it's not the food and water part. I actually, it, for me, it's a spiritual time. It's the time to let go of distractions. Um, so... I, I, I tend to... You're not letting go of your wife, right? <laughs> yeah. You never know, right? But what I mean is like, you know, like I'll avoid like certain things. So for instance, I tend to... Strip clubs, definitely. That's you, man. You gotta stop, you gotta stop reflecting on me, man. Club, clubbing. <laughs> no, but I mean, like I'll give an example is I might like there may be TV shows or movies, for instance, that, you know, I tend to... It's funny enough, I go PG. Okay. Ramadan, okay. Yeah. Right? The books that I read um, might be more PG. Um, the television like, you watch. Yeah, you know, th let's say, for instance, you know, pre-Ramadan, pre you know, there might be a restaurant that you might go there. And let's say, for instance, they might serve alcohol, as okay. an example. Yeah. During Ramadan, I'll avoid really? going to those nice. places. Nice. So any, That's so awesome. anything, it's effectively, it's more about sitting back, reflecting on life, reading the Quran, um, Making sure that not just doing the prayers, but doing them on time, yeah, and then doing the nightly prayers, and then sitting around in family and actually talking about what you know, the the beauty of Ramadan. Yeah, yeah. What about you? 
So honestly, man, every time before Ramadan comes, I have these like mixed feelings. I mean, I think you guys know me well enough. Alhamdulillah, I go out often with the family. We like to do little weekend trips and yeah. things like that. And during the month of Ramadan, that all stops, right? Everything is kind of around food. Yeah. So yeah. you're not going to travel because it doesn't really make sense to travel. Yeah. You don't really go to restaurants during the day. You kind of really don't do much during the day because you're trying to conserve your energy and, and things like that. But as soon as it starts, man, I get super emotional, like super, super emotional. I love it. I enjoy it so much and then I day one I'm like oh my god there's 28 or 29 more days to go and then you find you're on day five already and then yeah. day 10 and then it's over and you're like man that was so much fun like Definitely. I missed it I love yeah. the camaraderie uh, of the family and you know being together and the iftars you know the iftar technically iftar means breakfast right yeah. but we're breaking our fast which is why they call it breakfast right because you sleep at you break night fast. Uh, yeah. and you wake up in the morning and you're it's the first thing so you've been fasting all night so that's where the term breakfast comes from and iftar literally means breakfast so mm. we're having you know iftar normally in gatherings i'm sure we'll all have iftars us and the guys many times and yeah, for sure. you see different friends and family and things like that so i, I love all of that well i, I just i love how ramadan brings people together like we we struggle to find time throughout the week, throughout the months, throughout the year. But subhanAllah, when the Ramadan comes around, it's just a beautiful time for family, for get-togethers, you know, for meeting friends, having iftar together, going to the mosque. So you do things in Ramadan that you sort of don't do often during the year. So I just love that aspect of it, you know. Yeah. And then when it finishes, it's sad. And then you go back to your normal routine. Yeah, and yeah. yeah then all of a sudden, blink of an eye, the following Ramadan comes around, you know. Yeah, yeah. Ramadan for me, and I think for most Muslims, uh, is it's like a recharge, right, of your iman, of your faith, right? Um, everybody, I think it's natural, your faith kind of goes up and down with everything, right? Even your work ethic, you might find a week that you're so strong at work, and the next week you're not feeling it. For Ramadan sure. kind of gives you this reboost, where even after Ramadan ends, you might still be like on a high and strong, and you remember. Um, so it's good, like, alhamdulillah, I think it's... Mm. You know, it, it's good that obviously we do that. It comes around every year. I will say when you're talking about, you know, the iftars and the get togethers, yeah. one of the things that I do like, and, and my friends will probably hate me for saying this, but <laughs> it's like when you have a, an iftar gathering, right? So it's a dinner time, right? It's at sunset. So here in Dubai, it's going to be like around 630 or yeah. so. Uh, like there's nightly prayers every night. Most people, most men go to those nightly prayers. We call them tarawiyah after the fifth prayer of the day. Uh, so you have like, hey, you guys can come over. You guys can eat dinner. But you got to be out in an hour, an hour and 15 <laughs> minutes because I'm going to the prayers. As opposed to during a regular time, they might come over and stay for three, four or five yeah, hours. Yeah. And how do you kick someone out of your house? How well, do you even the men might like, you know, the men like, let's say, for instance, if it's families, right, the women may stay. That's at somebody's house. Well, they house. can do whatever they want. They I don't care. Yeah. But I'm out. <laughs> the men you know? will go yeah, together yeah, yeah. and go pray with Tarawih together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. it does build a bond, you know, because we've all prayed together. Uh, it's, the, you know, the prayers can, depending on where you're going, can be quite long. You know, some uh, some sheikhs or imams might put out quick. The, uh, verse, <laughs> a quick verse. To Others them. can be, you know, Surah to Bakra, and that could be yeah. a very long um, version you could be it could be an hour before you get out <laughs> right, right. Yeah, um, for sure. and you know some places do uh, will pray eight rakah mm -hmm. uh, which is how many times you go up and down and some places will do 20 right yeah right so it really depends on where you go for sure um, I look at funny enough when during Ramadan I have I actually called there's the four weeks of Ramadan and it's a different physical phases and spiritual the first week is usually the week of excitement yeah. In Ramadan, like it's a change. I can do this. It's going to be great. Then the second week is the week of shock, yeah. where the body goes into shock. <laughs> okay, this is where the headaches. You know, especially with coffee withdrawals. Yeah. Really? The body. See, yeah. I'm feeling that. I don't drink coffee yeah. or tea. I think you guys know yeah. it. I'm sorry to cut you off. I know you mentioned that. But I feel like, <laughs> I feel like this is a conversation between yeah, the guys. Yeah, for man. sure. So, um, but uh, I, I do drink a lot of soda. Yeah. And but so, you, you might go through a withdrawal from that. But that's in yeah. the first few days. Yeah. Some, yeah. People, some people can go for a week and then go. So no, no. Then the third week is the week of tiredness. Yeah. Because the, the, you broke, it's bro a lot of broken sleep. Yeah. That's a lot of waking up for the early morning prayer that yep. you might not be doing generally because you're trying to improve yeah, yourself you're trying to yeah, prove. Yeah. Yeah. and then the fourth week is the excitement week but it's the sad excitement like yeah. you finish you know you've come to the end you're you finished you've gone through it you're excited that you've completed but you're sad at the same time because it's over of course right. definitely right definitely and I, it's always interesting because i can tell like i see people's expressions like the first week they're 
exuberant the second week <laughs> like this the third one <laughs> like, yeah yeah for sure like this and then the fourth one they're bouncing back right this is okay i need to make this last week count look i think we can you know um it's a crude example but we could say we could compare it to sort of a detox ramadan right because you're you're denying yourself food and drink during the day and you're worshiping you know your lord more often and you're sleeping earlier waking up earlier so it's like a detox for the body you know you know how we you know, if you're not feeling well, you might, you know, detox yourself or you might take a break from drinking coffee or tea or or take some more vitamins. So Ramadan's, you know, very good for your body as well, you know, yeah, which yeah. is nice. Just a little disclaimer for our listener. We're not scholars by any means. We're just here to kind of just chat about our experiences of yeah. Ramadan. Um, but just for like the quick overview, uh, Ramadan was prescribed upon all Muslims, a- able-bodied Muslims. It's one of our five pillars of Islam. Like Ali said, we fast from dawn till sunset we avoid all w- food water um, and there's some other things as well like sexual relations with your mistress you don't you shouldn't do that um, with your wife you shouldn't do that as well uh, <laughs> but uh, but no really there's but no there's, there's a lot of avoiding there's no like, sexual yeah, relations yeah, no and, sexual relation. and that means it, not just relationships but not even being in a situation yeah why where, where you may be aroused as an example so even your behavior amongst your wife my change is that why every time I go in the grocery store, all the women leave. Yep, <laughs> I, I can't get aroused. That's right. Here. <laughs> yeah. Head down, head down, walk like that. <laughs> no, but I'm gonna give an example. I'll give an example, and you, my guys, like laugh is during you know like we're not gonna like, laugh at anything you, you say. Ju- you avoid, <laughs> you avoid <laughs> gym. You avoid certain times of the for gymming, right? Or I go to a time where it's more. I know it's gonna be more men yeah. at the gym. Right. Well, I avoid the gym normally like January through December. That's kind of my my thing. Yeah, it's so, working. Yeah, it's working. <laughs> right. So you know, but look, Dubai fasting in Dubai has been a good experience. I'd have to say it's a lot more enjoyable than fasting at home back in our home countries. Yeah. Um, now, as as an expat without family here, I. Definitely miss my family. Yes, for sure. Um, I don't know about you. It's guys. almost like non Muslims celebrating yeah. Christmas yeah, or Easter exactly. without yeah. their family. Like, it's always uh, nicer with your family. You know, yeah. if, I, if I think about, you know, in Australia, you know, we're always busy with our lives, yeah. right? And my family, you know, we're a small family in Australia. I've got one uncle on my mom's side and one uncle on my dad's side. Um, everyone's grown up a little bit, you know, so everyone has their own kids. Yeah. But I remember during Ramadan, it was always every weekend. We would, we would, the families would gather. Get together, right? yeah. And I miss that being here. But I'll have to say, it is easier to fast here in the UAE, in a Muslim majority country, where the country is designed to make it easier for you to fast. Well, isn't it safe to say most people you, take it easy in Ramadan in the UAE? I would say so, yeah. yeah. Do you t- feel that way, Ali, that it's easier yeah. to fast here? Um, yeah, I think it is easier to fast when a majority of the people are doing something. Okay. It does make it easier. Okay. And obviously, you know, the restaurants cater for Ramadan with the, you know, Ramadan style buffets or, or the menus for Ramadan, you know, the mosques are all open. Um, so like too late. Um, and also for the, um, the, the, the meal before, you know, when you wake up before the Fajr, suhoor, yeah. the suhoor, yeah. you know, there's uh, also if you wanted to eat out for right. that, that's also right. very easy. So everything stays open late. So I find it is a little bit easier. And of course, in Australia, we sort of break our fast later because of daylight saving. So now we're in the season where they break their fast between 7.30 and 8.00 p.m. Whereas in the UAE, we're breaking our fast around 6.00 p.m. Mm. So it's definitely easier in the UAE. But I think it's also like if you think about schools and even even work. Yeah. Right. So... Did you guys ever work in a corporate environment? Yeah, I, I no? didn't. No. Okay, so in a corporate environment in Australia, right? Everyone's eating around you. Everyone's Correct. drinking coffee around you. Well, that yeah. was one of the things yeah. I wanted to ask you guys about. Yeah. Uh, but just real quick, I wanted to touch on what Ali was saying about the suhoor, which is so we start at dawn, right, to to fast, yeah. right? So um, it's it's sunnah, meaning it's something that the <coughs> prophet, may peace be upon him, recommended to do would wake up before mm. that, before the time of fasting t- to start and eat something small, drink some water. Approximately like an that. hour before. So an is that something Is that yeah. something you guys do? Yeah. And generally it starts off bigger in the first week. Yeah. You know, you might eat a lot more, but by the end of, <laughs> you just like a day. So you say water. an hour before, personally, I can't do that. 
I, I wake up five minutes before. Really? I just drink water. I don't eat anything. No, I, I um, feel if I eat, I get more hungry throughout the day. Yeah, so the, so what I was going to say is I actually don't have suhoor either. Okay. I, if, if I'm invited out, then I might do suhoor once or twice in Ramadan. But most of the time, I'm exactly like you. I wake up about 10 to 15 minutes before the Fajr prayer, drink water. Yep. You know, maybe, I don't know, have a bit of, you know... Uh, like an avocado or something very, very minor, a piece of mango or something, and pretty much drink water, you know, go up like a camel all the way to the Adan. Yeah. And then, yeah. You know, yeah. and then I'm, yeah. I'm a 45 minute before, hour before. Wow. You have a Enjoy. feast, eh? Oh, I won't, look, I won't say a feast, but um, I'm, a, I'm a slow wake up person. And what that means is that um, I like if, I, like, if I know I've got to leave at a certain time, I give myself an hour, an hour and a half. Okay. Right? So I wake up. Take my time with my breakfast. You can hit the snooze maybe into, once yeah, or twice. Like You're not in a rush. And then, yeah. no, I don't like to rush when I eat. Yeah. Right? So by the time I get to the point, I, I like to the last minute, you know, I'm not gulping down or anything. I've had but do you have go-to foods? Yeah, generally like, you know, like traditional, you know, like cheeses. Yeah, watermelon, and, right? Uh, watermelon, uh, some fruits. You know, as I said, you start off a little bit. I would bit not have thought any of those three are traditional, by the way. You know? no, Arabs I mean, love watermelon. Well, no, of course, of course. Yeah. Arabs love all those things. But yeah. uh, when you said traditional, I was thinking maybe like full, masala. Uh, well, see, the thing is, that I feel like I get heavy. Yeah, so I actually, I actually, I've tried to avoid like having heavy meals for, for suhoor. Um, because then I'll feel like I'll feel it and then it will carry on throughout the day well, and some, then I'll get hungry. Well, some foods make you thirsty as well, yeah. right? So some foods... You, you, you wake up in the storm. You know, well, exactly. You know, <laughs> having a pizza, <laughs> have a kebab. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And imagine having a pizza and a kebab, you know, praying Fajr, then going to sleep, waking up, your mouth will be dry the whole so day. Nice fruits. Yeah. fruits yeah. are good for fruits, you. Yeah. Um, water is obviously good. You know, I might have tea yeah. before. Yeah. You know, um, and then that's it. Um, you know, do my prayers when, when the Fajr is. Do, do you change your work routine at all during Ramadan? Well, see, it, it's funny enough. If I go back to Australia, right? You, they, they didn't care. Yeah, yeah. I'll be quite frank with you. You just work like it's normal, right? It, you work like it's normal. Probably the only thing I could get away with is, hey, I'm not. I'm going to work through lunch. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do my five. Maybe minute leave early. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll leave early yeah. to try to make. But plenty of times, like, okay, so Australia is obviously for the past maybe ten years. Yeah, ten fifteen have had, years. Had, had has had um, f um, Ramadan during the cool colder periods. So okay. during winter. So, Usually it's around five o'clock is when they were breaking fast. Yeah. So when you were working, right? Even even if you travelled, like you got if I got off at four or four thirty because I've um I've been let allowed to go early, I'm usually on the train and it's it was, yeah. And I'd break my fast on the train with a date or something like that, or I might just stay at work, break with fast with any other Muslims that are around. Yeah. Pray pray the Maghrib and then go home. Um, well, can he, you explain this this little thing that you touched on about the fact that f 10, 15 years ago it was during this time, yeah. like you know, for, so for non-Muslims, yeah. right? They're like, why isn't it March fifteenth sure. every year? Yeah. So uh, the Islamic calendar is is different to the uh, let's say the Gregorian calendar, which is or the Christian calendar. Our our calendar is about eleven to twelve days shorter, correct? Because it's based on the um, uh, lunar the lunar cycle, cycle right? And so. And I actually think that's a blessing. And the reason being is that everyone, every 20 years, everybody gets to the Northern Hemisphere will enjoy it. At winter, you know, the cooler period. Well, every 20 33 years. years. Or 33 years. It repeats. It? Yeah. I thought it was 20, right? Well, if you do, if you have 11 days times yeah, 33. Yeah, so. right? yeah. And then it shifts over. Yeah. So I remembered when I was a kid, and we'll talk about obviously when we all started, but I remembered when I first started, it was in wintertime. So it was easier to, uh, you know, to learn how to fast. But, you know, I remember when I was in high school, at the end and in my 20s, um, it was in summertime, right? And You're showing was, your age to me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, <laughs> the opposite. I'm the opposite right? to me. And so what happened was, you know, I remember there were times that we were fasting till like 9 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember yeah. Those Us times. too. Yeah, for you sure. Know? And, they were, and we would wake up for suhoor around 3 o'clock in the morning. So realistically, you had only six hours um, well, you're not fasting. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're not fasting. Right, right. Right? And you're tired and exhausted. Well, knowing that in the Northern Hemisphere... They're breaking right, the fast they're breaking at 4.30. They're breaking the fast at 5, 4.30, <laughs> 5 o'clock. Yeah, right. right. And waking up at 6. Right? So now what's happening is 
we're in that point where it's shifting now. Yeah. Right. Where the southern hemisphere is getting, it's they'll start experiencing. Actually, this year, they'll start experiencing the summer uh, times of Ramadan, and we're in the northern hemisphere. So you're used to it because you're from the US, but in the normal, norm, uh, in the northern hemisphere, they're going to start experience the winter. Um, yeah, so they they fall yeah, we fall shorter, right? Yeah, yeah. And they yeah. have shorter, and that right. will go for thirty years. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, for us, the shortest period is maybe like in January, where we would fast mm. till like five fifteen. Yeah, you know, that's when the sunset was, yeah. and then in the summer, you're talking about like eight forty seven, eight yeah. forty eight. You know, uh, whatever that was, ten fifteen years ago, yeah. and so you almost like dread yeah. those days. Not only is it you're fasting so long, but it's hot. You but, get thirsty. But here's the miracle, and this is why it makes a lot of sense, because it would be very unfair if one side of the world always had it short and the other side of the world always had it long. True. So by shifting the you know, the, the Islamic account, everyone experiences Ramadan at, in a certain part of their life. If they, they're lucky Is this to even true, like in the very, very northern areas of yeah. Europe where it's only daylight for a couple of hours yeah. or there's only dark? It well, also you know, rotates Ireland, there. Are, I know some Muslims in Ireland uh -huh. and when it's summertime, it's past 10 o'clock. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When yeah. they can break their fast. Yeah. And they stop and they restart around two o'clock in the morning. All right. And there's even further. Um, there's some countries yeah, where, where there's really it's pretty much, much the whole day, twenty four hours. Yeah. They've only got a very like a couple of hours of night. You know. Yeah. I went to Alaska uh, for a road trip uh, in two thousand and sixteen. And it would, it never got pitch black. Yeah. Never. Wow. Yeah. And uh, it would, it would get dark, like start to get Maghrib sunset time around two or something in the yeah. morning. Yeah. Wow. So imagine then, having to fast. Yeah. At yeah, that time. Yeah. It you would know? mess with your head so much, Ali. You'd be driving <clears> and it's daylight outside and it starts to get dark. And then you look, it's like, oh, it's 2.30 in the morning. And then like, we should sleep. And we had rented an RV and we were traveling. Anyway, that's a whole nother story. I wanted to ask you, Timmy, if you could just touch on or tell me what, it, uh, what the process was like for both of you guys in Australia. And of course, I'll tell you what it was like for us. When they're announcing the first day of Ramadan, when they're announcing... We Eid, learned it from... A, so we used to have these radios. <laughs> okay. Correct. Right. Yeah. And these... So... We would have these um, old style radios that were only tuned in to these uh, Islamic radio channels. Yeah, I think there was only one or two at the time. Right? Yeah. Where did and you get these radios from? Uh, you just buy them from the mosque or from the Arab, um, the stores. one, the stores, the, you know, okay. like the grocery stores okay, uh -huh. and things like that. And they were only turned on uh -huh. during the month of Ramadan. You, never, you don't turn them on the rest of the year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. And during the month of Ramadan, it would it would add down because we we don't have cannons here. There's no mo see. Sydney now, or Australia now, is a bit different than it was 10, 20, 30 years ago. 10, 30, let's say, if, I'll, I'll show my age, but 30 years ago, there were hardly any mosques. Yeah. Right? So, and if you weren't living in close to a mosque, you were dependent on that radio. And this is before the apps and all that. You were of dependent course. on that yeah, radio course. to announce the event. Yeah. Right? And so everyone used to listen to those radios and you could find that radio in every house. I'm talking more about the announcement of, because what yeah, happens even the announcement, is based even on... the announcement would be on the radio. Yeah. So we'll be sitting there listening. Okay. So what they'll announce. normally do, they'll, they'll, they'll tell you Saudi Arabia announced that, you know, the 10th of March is the first day of Ramadan. Okay. So then everyone will be like, okay, we're fasting the 10th of March or... Whatever yep. it is, you know? however, hold on. However, however, is, is that true? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes or no? Depending, yes or no. depending yes or no. on the time. So we we ha Australia has a Grand Mufti. Okay. Right. This is the person who has been elected from a number about a couple of hundred sheikhs. Yeah. Sheikhs, yeah, right. Yeah. And that sh Grand Mufti would then, basing on his rec recommendations, and um, would then announce. Now, did every Muslim in Australia follow the Grand Mufti? No. So some would follow him, some would say, no, nah, I'm following my country, right? Yeah. And another would say, I need to see the, the, I need to sight the moon myself. And if I didn't see it, it's going to be the next day. Yeah. Gotcha. Right? Which is so, all permissible. Yeah. yeah. So there permissible. were times where we, had, there were, I remember one year. I'm not a scholar. Like I don't three, want to push back yeah, no, no, incorrectly. I'm not scholar, and I'm not but I don't know if those are all permissible, right? by the way. I don't know if those right. are all permissible. Right. But... The three, but what happened? Did I remember one um, Aid where it was there were th three days it fell on, you know? I mean, so no, there were three different groups who celebrated Aid on different the start of Aid on different yeah, days. Yeah, right. And I remembered one <laughs> one time I ran to a mosque. It was a Granville mosque. Where is everybody? Right. 
And I realized because the Grand Mufti had announced on that day, yeah. but because the moon wasn't sighted in Australia, it was sighted in Saudi Arabia or UAE, this mosque decided, even though the Grand Mufti had announced it, they had decided not because it wasn't observed in Australia, that they were not going to, they were going to do it the next day. So it became a, which mosque is celebrating and on which day and, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. It, was, it was challenging. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, you know, here in the UAE, they announce it, every mosque is, um, is uh, everyone is celebrating on that day. On the same day. Well, in the last few years, they've even gotten, uh, they're using science, right, and technology yeah. and saying that even if we don't see it, it's possible to see it and we know it's there and it's going to be Eid on this day and sometimes they even call it beforehand. Uh, but yeah, growing up, it was very similar. We didn't have radios. I mean, we had radios, but we didn't have radios handed out by the mosque or yeah, anything yeah. like that. Um, and uh, most, people, most, most people, honestly, I was young and so I would just hear from hear from people and people would call and say, <laughs> Eid Mubarak, Eid Kareem. They would always make the joke, Eid Kareem, Ram <laughs> Ram Ram Ramadan Kareem Karmuz, because <laughs> that's my last name, you know. Um, and uh, It was even and, funny the first time. <laughs> it's been like 30 it's funny years, 30 years later the same yeah. um so uh so yeah we get the announcement but we like you said man also in our area we only had one mosque growing up yeah and then it wasn't until probably about 20 years ago that we started opening different mosques and in the beginning they were actually like this was a mosque for Arabs and this was a mosque for Daisies and this was a mosque for nobody opened it with that in mind yeah, but the guy who opened it he was Daisy what's so the demographic around there, there too yeah. Yeah. Um, and so same thing would happen sometimes where people would be celebrating on different days but recently alhamdulillah they've actually all come together and said we'll act like one unit in this area Mashallah. I think 10-15 mosque and one person will go out and see and, uh, and, and make that call and then we do the same thing for Eid so on the so Ramadan is either 29 or 30 30 days yeah. so on the 29th day just for I know you guys know alhamdulillah but just for our listener on the 29th day they'll do the same thing after they break their fast they'll go after they break their fast they'll go out and look and see if they see the moon and you're on pins and needles right is it going to be Eid tomorrow especially <laughs> as a kid is it yeah. going to be Eid tomorrow or do we need to go pray another tarawiyah? Do we have to Well we're on pins and needles day? now when we're you know in our 30s and 40s Yeah right? yeah so. yeah for sure for sure um so uh, just you, you guys touched on a little bit of aspect of what it was like in Australia, but what were the biggest uh, hurdles, I guess, the biggest problem? Like, just a little bit about what it was like growing up, especially as kids. I mean, alhamdulillah, I think as an older generation, you don't... Well, the thing is, I'll speak for myself. So it's interesting because each of us decides when they're going to fast. So I started fasting at a relatively young age, I would say about eight or nine. Mm -hmm. But I did what we call the fasting in secrecy. So I'm fasting, but I'll drink water, chew a bit of gum at school, you know, steal someone's lunch, go home to my mum, yeah, I'm fasting, you know, so. I don't know if that's fasting or <laughs> secrecy at all. I was eight or nine years old. <laughs> that's eating in secrecy. <laughs> that's it. So the thing, but then, um, yeah, it's just uh, everyone's journey is a little bit different. And then all of a sudden, one year, you're like, I'm going to fast the whole time. And you think it's almost impossible. I started fasting the opposite to Timmy. It was in the middle of summer. So I was say 10 or 11 where I decided, you know, I'm going to fast every single day. And it was um, breaking our fast between 8.30 to 9 p.m. Very, very, very difficult. But you know what? It made it, made it so much easier to fast as an adult. And, um, and yeah, and just um, and pretty much, uh, you know, with my family, um, we, we get together in Ramadan a lot more than when we get together throughout course, the year. Of course, yeah, of course. Yeah. So for example, we normally either, well, now that I'm married, but I'll either eat at my father-in-law's or at my father's house, or my sister-in-law's. I'll never eat at home. So well, you can't say I'm day. busy, right? You can't say I have no. plans because we're all eating. We but, know you're eating at that time. So tell me what day you're free and we're going to all eat because yeah. every single Muslim in Australia is eating at the exact same time. That's right. But so see, you, it's crazy because you can't organize yes a dinner. Yes and no, by the way. Because <laughs> there's even the different sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some, you know. Well, we said no sex during Ramadan. <laughs> sex. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> CTS, CTS. I'm so sorry. No, but, Astaghfirullah. But, Astaghfirullah. What, but what I find amazing is. And you a, can't have sex during Ramadan, just real quick, but just not while you're fasting. Yeah, yeah, after, 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 yeah, after, yeah, after, yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. 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 Yes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Probably better to do it after the Probably better to do it after the Tarawih. After everything, <laughs> after what, after everything. I need two minutes, bro. I need two minutes. Nah, then you gotta have another shower again. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, my experience was different. Guys, we like, said we were gonna keep this PG. Just uh, please take yeah, yeah. I know that's so, my fault, but I just yeah. want to apologize. Stay tuned. We'll clean it up for the right. Stay tuned. So, look, my experience was because obviously I'm ten years older than you. I think I am. Yeah, only ten. How old are you? 
84. I'm 84. I was born in 84. I'm old, way you're you're in the late 50s, years, aren't right? you? 60s? Yeah, you were born like, what? 86, you said? Yeah. yeah, I'm 84. 75. 75. Right? MashaAllah. So I grew up and I black went and white to... TVs. I went to... <laughs> yeah, actually. Um, so I went to Tung... I was living in Tung Yeah. Now, Tung just for people who knows, is the third oldest town in, in Australia. But that's like and really far from the city. And it's the oldest... That Tung public school where I went to was the oldest school in Australia. Wow. Um... I remember being there and we celebrated our 200 year at the wow. school, how old wow. the school was, wow. right? What and was it like for your, your friends and non-Muslims? Like so here's the thing. I was the only, there was only one other Muslim who was a Turkish Muslim, but he wasn't practicing. Yeah. And there's a Turkish Muslim not practicing, and then there's a, an Egyptian, Egyptian Muslim that is practicing, <laughs> right. but his name is Timmy. Yeah. So they're so confused. <laughs> and I remember teachers, teachers were concerned because... A Muslim, what's, what's his fasting? Yeah. And they'd be calling the parent, my parents going, why is he not eating? eating? Yeah. So I started, uh, so my mom, my parents started me, I did a half fast when I was seven. Yeah. We did the same. For half the day. We did the same. And then by eight years old, right? Which is the Islamic rule, to be honest, anyway. But regardless, eight years old, full day fast. And from yeah. then on, I, I never Allah. changed. And in fact, I did the same rule with my son. Nice. As well, you know, except, uh, although he might have started a year earlier than I did. Um, but um, yeah, we just, but it was difficult because all the kids around are eating and drinking and then you're still expected to do sports. You're still expected to do all the activities. There is no home, like you get to go home. Well, early. did it bother you growing up when other people would eat around you? Because I remember for, for us, yeah. right? Every like I had a, obviously a lot of non-Muslim friends. Mm. Not that I'm popular and I had so many yeah. friends, but <laughs> a lot of my friends were non-Muslim and it would be lunchtime and my mom would say, you can go to the library and just sit in the library, but I want to go to lunch. I'm going yeah, to go to the cafeteria and hang yeah. out. Yeah. And but they would all be like, oh, cream, I feel so bad. I'm like, yo, you're good. Like I, it, it bothers I, me I zero. I feel so bad. Mm. Yeah, I, yeah. So, oh, they would do that. Try it. Nobody would see. No, you, you know, know what they that? would tell me? Don't worry. It's bacon. You can't yeah. have it in. Anyway. <laughs> but I would always get the why are you fasting? Why? Here, have something. Nobody will know. I won't tell your parents. Yeah. I'm going to say God will know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and, and funny enough, that wasn't just in school, that was also in um, tertiary education, and that was also at work. Look, I think, well. I think a lot of non-Muslims are interested about Ramadan. You know, I think they can't see themselves fasting from dawn till sunset because a lot of the main questions we get are oh, you can't even drink. Yeah. Oh, um, you can't even take, you know, your medication. Right, which right. Obviously, there's exceptions. Not everyone has to fast, but you get a lot of those interesting questions. And then when you answer them, tell them no, you can't drink. No, you can't eat. Um, not even for one minute. Not even for five minutes. Not even not for thirty days straight. Yeah. Yep. So they they people that haven't fasted before find it difficult. But uh, like like what Timmy said at the beginning of the pod, you know, the first week is excitement. You know, second week is shock. But when you've, when you've done it since you, since you were very young, it just becomes so easy when you get older. Well, even at our age, right? Like if I told you guys yesterday, hey guys, just don't eat breakfast and, and have a very light lunch. You might be like, what, dude, I have to have breakfast. I have to have a big lunch. Yeah. Like, you know, but when you start to fast, right, when it's Ramadan or there's other days that we fast, not during Ramadan necessarily, but when you fast for the intention, right, for the sake of Allah, for the sake of God, it's just, it changes something inside of you. Of course. Course. The day after Ramadan, and especially as a kid, I used to hate this. I'll tell my mom, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. You just fasted for 12 <laughs> hours and now you can't eat. Yeah, but I'm not fasting anymore. So don't force that upon me. But when it's Ramadan and when you have to fast, subhanAllah, and it's good to eat. You don't changes. think about 100%. it. Yeah. Mindset changes. Yeah. That's also the beauty of Ramadan too. You know? So for, so for non-Muslims, listening. you were saying, so for non-Muslims, they can't believe that you can't drink, that you can't yeah. eat, and they can't fathom. And when you tell them, oh, it's nothing. It's easy. It's like no big deal. It's second nature now, Taban. But I also think it's not just the food is, you see our behaviors change. Yeah. So for instance, you might, hey, if there's a, 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 when you were younger, there was a, maybe a, a female a, a school friend or a neighbor, hey, well, like this, you shake hands. Doing wrong. Stop, stop. stop what a lot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. No shaking hands. I mean, even, no touching. I was that. Like, yeah, even, yeah. Like, yeah, but it, even it, music, right? So I like yeah, I enjoy stop. listening to music in Ramadan. I'd stop. Stop. Yeah, yeah. You know, like you might, you might, uh, I don't know, something will come across the TV in Ramadan. Hey, you know what? I'm only going to watch certain type of shows, either religious yeah. ones or, you know, cartoons with the kids or shows that I know there's not going to be, you know, I'll tell anything. you something. I would, because um, this is my age again. So there were shows that I knew I couldn't, like I was following. And back in the day, and for all the Gen Z's you only got and one Gen Z's, <laughs> right? There was no internet up until there was no downs, there was no streaming. 
we used to watch our episodes once a week. Right, right. At a particular time. Yeah, right. The Simpsons, remember? Right, as a Simpsons mm-hmm. or anything like this. It was a movie. And so we, I would go and record on a VHS, right? You type out But I wouldn't parents. watch it until after Ramadan. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so, dad, 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 uh, wait, 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 don't play the title yet. Hit record. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do the record, come back. Do the record? Yes. Okay, alhamdulillah. Right? That's how it used to be, right? Yeah. So I, I would have, as you said, Ali, I would avoid certain shows, wouldn't listen to, watch music, wouldn't go to the movies. Yeah. Right? Because of the smell of the popcorn. Yeah. Because I love popcorn. And, yeah. you know, like, it'd be like. It's probably the most addicting smell yeah, out there. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Like, right? So, in a sense, is, is avoiding a lot of. And, you know, yeah. uh, unfortunately, you know, even with my non Muslim friends, a lot of times I would say, hey, man, unless it's like it's just hanging out sort of thing. Right. I can't. I'm not going to hang out in the night. Yeah, you might be one of those time at the mosque. Especially or, you know. when, even, in, you know, and, you know, when you're in your 20s, you might, you know, stray a little bit. But. Even then, when Ramadan kicked in, I'm 39. I'm still straying. Right. But yeah, yeah, Ramadan's yeah. perfect. Man. Yeah, yeah, play. <laughs> <laughs> right, but uh, your wife is gonna be looking. Hey, you did this and you did this, and you did this. right? But after, but during Ramadan, it's it's a different. She can't divorce me during Ramadan. No, no, right? after Ramadan. Yeah, after Ramadan. Man. After Ramadan. Ramadan. for another month. Right, <laughs> right. But during but during Ramadan, you're a different person. I actually feel you're the best person. For sure. Who you are. Yeah. Right. And then it's almost like the real you. And so for me, and I, I, you know, concur on all the things that you said and you guys didn't mention, but uh, mashallah, I don't think you guys curse as much as I do. I don't yeah. curse a lot, but that was definitely something that, that I would watch. Um, and I would try not to try not to curse. And it's just all about being this like spiritual being, being closer to God, being a better person. Um, so that was one thing that I would, that I would do. And, you know, unfortunately or fortunately or whatever, alhamdulillah, before I was married, uh, you know, I would at the beginning of Ramadan, I would send out a text or tell my friends like, Hey guys, no more of this, no more of this. I'm not going to be able to see you for a month, yeah. but on Eid, hit me up because we're chill <laughs> and, we're, uh, and we'll party. And you know what happened, man, is when I was a junior in high school, so I was like 17 years old is Eid came and every Ramadan before that it was like 30 days of what pure holiness whatever and the day after Eid right back into my routine you know astaghfirullah may Allah well, forgive us from, but when I was 17 mm. look who's interrupting now <laughs> I, I stopped I stopped I appreciate it I when, when I was 17 after Ramadan ended Nothing changed in me. It just it just stayed the same. Alhamdulillah. And since then, alhamdulillah. I mean, we all have our ups and downs. Yeah, but since then, alhamdulillah. So I've been like a completely, completely different person. Well, in this, in in our Islamic tradition, they say that during Ramadan, the, the shaitan or devil, right, say is it, locked up. Yeah, is you know is locked chained, up, yeah. chained right. up. Yeah. So we find that those distractions or the little voice in your head that says, "Do it." You know you want to, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, isn't there yeah. as much? But after Ramadan, and you know, it's he's let out. Right? <laughs> well, even if you do have, you go back to your bad habits again. Yeah. Although, inshallah, the idea is that every year you get better. You're right? getting better, right? Yeah. Right, and that could be a because you're getting older, you've got more responsibilities. But generally speaking, the idea is if you if you come out of Ramadan with just a little, you know, something improved. Then I think your Ramadan was accepted. Yeah. Right. If you go back to after Ramadan and you're going back to you know um, to a lifestyle of uh, sex, drugs, alcohol, things like that. Don't tempt me, tempt me. Don't know, tempt me. Right, right? You're not doing. You know, um, you know. Can we see that again, please? <laughs> <laughs> Never seen a, somebody that do that. That was a, 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 a one time only. Right? Never seen someone do that in Kondora before. Right? <laughs> I have. <laughs> Um, That's going to be then, our first meme. Then realistically, <laughs> you, you know, you're not. You, it, it, I feel like you just. Well, talk about what's in your heart, right? We all yeah. know that we we know plenty of people who are only fasting because their parents are watching or because their wife wants them to fast. And if they were to, God forbid, move somewhere by themselves, they might not even fast. Yeah. So it's all about what's in your heart. Yeah. And, and God knows what's... And so it comes out in, in, in your action. Then even I find myself, even if I'm tempted to do something, whatever it may be, that I go back on what you said and I'm like, well, this is me 100%. Like, I can't blame this on the shaitan. I can't yeah. blame this on Satan. Yeah. This is 100% me. So, your... so yeah, like, this is you. No damn, excuses. Damn, yeah. Either I'm an evil person or I got to cut this out. So. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys crave anything while you're fasting? Do you crave uh, not only food, drinks? Enough, do you miss things? I don't think food no, and drink. No, no, not really. No. You know, I'll, I'll tell you something. So up until about t- till 2015 or 14, 
I used to get the headaches because of coffee. And so what I've been doing since 2014, 15, is we need I to know the exact year for this podcast. Yeah. We need to know it's the important. exact year. Yeah, right? yeah. Scientific I know, I know, study. Right? Just to show how old I am. Right? <laughs> right? That's why I'm the wisdom in the three. You know, comedy, <laughs> wisdom, truth. Honesty. 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 Right? Um, I, I like the comedy, but I don't know if that's what I want to be known for. <laughs> <only>. <laughs> right. Right. I would get the... I, I stopped. So what I would do is I'd actually... So I'm right now going through coffee withdrawal. Okay. You know? Right, and I'm feeling it because we've been filming for 45 minutes, and you haven't had one. I haven't had all day. Oh, all day. Okay, okay. right, all day, and it's been. So you're I, starting your day. Your... Yeah, because it's yeah. Monday, right? So I'm starting the detox um, already. Got gotcha. you. Right, um, just to prepare for you know Ramadan in the next few days, and just to um, to make sure that when I'm fasting, I'm not going through those. Got gotcha. uh, Shakes. I know a lot of smokers go through. Yeah, a of lot course. of like if you know, especially if you're a heavy smoker. So one of the other things we talked about, you know, food and water, but it's also smoking. Correct. Yeah. Right. Correct. And for smokers, it's very tough. For sure. You know, for a smoker to go for eight to twelve hours. Have you guys ever smoked before? No. That's no. not been so anything. You, so okay, for instance, cream, right? You, you used you used to smoke. I did. Right? How did Thank you? you How did you for find calling you? me out on that? That's okay. Sorry, we all have a, we all have our own sins, right? <laughs> How yeah, but I ain't calling it? yours out. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I'll right. tell you, man, since you mentioned it, yeah. since you mentioned it, and, on, and honestly, the only yeah. person, the only people I wouldn't want to hear this right now would be, just be my kids, and they're not going to listen to this podcast until they get older. And by daddy, that time, daddy. I don't mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I, was on your, I was on your phone. But I'll tell you what, man, when I would have if thought, when. <laughs> <laughs> when I would have iftar or the dinner with family and friends and at their house and stuff, it, you can't do anything. But when I would have iftar, just like me and the guys, if we went out to a restaurant or something, we would sit at the restaurant, we'd order our food, we'd break fast. I would bring, I was, I was always the guy who brought dates. We'd break our fast on a date. This is again, Sonna, the, the, mm. you know, uh, I would break fast on a date, drink some water. We'd go outside. We'd pray Maghrib in the parking lot. And then I would have a cigarette. Yeah, straight to cigarette. Straight to cigarette. A lot of a lot of my smoker friends did it very similar to you. They would do the necessary like thing to like break this? the fast, and then once that was done, straight to the their meal would be still yeah, yeah, out there. Yeah. But oh, it's the yeah. cigarette. we've got to have that. Cigarette. We don't want to tempt our, any of our <laughs> listeners right. who are fasting. But right. yeah, no. But I mean, yeah. if you if you yeah. if, even if you don't smoke. People who don't smoke maybe don't grasp with the intensity of the addiction, but they understand so because feel? they've seen okay, it. Okay, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Right? Because the coffee addiction goes away. Yeah. Right? Correct. So I don't know if you've gone through it. But, yeah, but so would you drink? I'm so sorry. No, yeah. So I drink coffee. I drink about three or four cups a day. Started that one. Now I'm up to three or four. I'm starting to show my age as well. Uh, the thing is, I don't do what Timmy does. I just stop before Ramadan. But the first three days, I really do feel it. So you don't drink after headaches. you break your fast or before? I try not to. I try not to. Okay. But I find myself halfway through Ramadan, I have a coffee here and there. But I'm the type of, if I have a coffee after a certain time, I won't be able to sleep. So yeah. I normally go all of Ramadan. I just cut it out completely. Yeah. Because, well, because it, our sleeping pattern is, you know, like if you think about it, we're, we're, we, we're staying at the minimum. We've got to stay up until after the Tarawih. Yeah, which is what, right? 8, 30, 9 o'clock? Yeah, yeah right, like depending. That. But if it was, it well, was it's even summer, later, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Later. Other countries is later. So, sure. if, you know, the, so you're now on a limited sleep time. Yeah. And because yeah. your body, you, every day you're getting a little bit more tired, a little bit more tired, right? The last thing you want is a coffee, Yeah. right, to keep you up. Got you. Right. Got you. So you do, yeah, you do find, and I agree with Ali, you know, you do f tend to find that you, you, you will drink less coffee because you don't want to be staying up. Yeah. You want to go to sleep yeah. because you've got to be waking up early in the morning. Yeah. And if you are a person like me who does have uh, suhoor, right, for, which is the having a meal before we start fasting. You'll be getting up at what, 3.30, right? Yeah, be at least yeah. half an hour earlier. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. half an hour of loss of sleep. Yeah. You know, I've never yeah. drink, drinking, drinking, drunk coffee. Never tried it? Never. No, yeah. I mean, I've, I've tasted it just from a coffee bean or whatever, but I've never drank never coffee. Never got into it. Never, and I've just never even to, drank it before. To right. be honest, um, I wish I had never either. I know that sounds like a brag, and we just got done about, you know, yeah. me talking about smoking, <laughs> whatever. But yeah, I have an addictive personality, like whatever it is. I mean, one time uh, we, were, we did a flip. And, uh, you know, a real estate flip and the people, this is so off subject, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the previous owners left behind an Xbox 
and some games. Um, and I took the Xbox home. My wife was a teacher at the time. I didn't have work for a couple hours. She would get up early. I would get up with her. And that first morning, man, I just stayed and played and played and played. And I went late to work. And that night I called my boy and I said, hey, man, I got a free Xbox if you want. Because I just knew, <laughs> you knew it was going to be bad. Same yeah, thing. Yeah. And I think I think I told you guys before with Instagram. You know, one of our friends sent us sent us a post and I hadn't opened Instagram and I logged into my Instagram that I had from my comedy days and I found myself on it for two, three hours. Well, I mean, these things are made to be addictive, yeah, right? Yeah. So they don't just release them and hope you like it. Yeah, they yeah. design it in a way where it's addictive. But the Actually, difference, man, just real quick, because I think mm. you were bringing up the coffee uh, about the cigarettes is that you, if you stop it the whole time, most people who smoke, if I know smokers the way I think I do, most people who smoke and comment, uh, you know, comment below if you if you're a smoker, you can hide your name if you like. <laughs> but they go into Ramadan with the intention that to you know quit. what I'm I, I'm forced to not smoke for that twelve hours. I'm gonna use this month and I'm just gonna stop. Yeah. But once you break your fast, like oh, yeah. But how does it feel? So I'm gonna ask you because it's a thing, and I've never really asked a smoker, right? How does it for for us is we get we go through the few days of coffee withdrawal, and then everything is fine. Yeah. The only thing is is tiredness. Right. And when I told you that week of week three, you tend to snap. Unfortunately, the downside of fasting, you get irritable yeah, and stuff. You get irritable saying, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, you know, of course. And that's the third week where I find I get more irritable. Yeah. But for a smoker perspective, um, how does it feel? Right. Because that craving doesn't go away. Right. That and you're smelling cigarettes around you, especially from non Muslims. Well, even when even when I'm smoking, I hate the smell of other people's cigarettes. So yeah. the smell has always bothered me. Okay. Even even when, when I was smoking, we would sit at the table. And if I wasn't smoking a cigarette, you know, because we're all sitting around and passing around, somebody would light up a cigarette. I'm like, dude, that smells so bad, you know? Um, so the smell just has always bothered me. But yeah, you feel, it's like if you get on an airplane and you're on an airplane for 14 hours, when you get off the airplane, first thing you want to do is, uh, this is this is horrible, man. This Ramadan episode has become 10, 15 minutes <laughs> no, about but, my old no, habits. But, but, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people you know, can relate. No, I'll give you an example. Sure. Now with social media as an example, now everyone's saying during Ramadan, I try to avoid. Yeah, you want to. I mean, media. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, want to yeah. read more Quran. You want to go to the mosque. Quran, you I want to make sure the content. So what might happen if I am on social media? If you know the thing, it's constantly pushing Skip. away until I yeah. find an Islamic point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Or I tend to look. I'm, I, I love listening to Sheikh Hamza Yusuf. So instead of using looking at the shorts, I go straight to the, to the video. Podcast, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Podcast. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And that I said, even that behavior changes around, um, you know, making sure that I'm reading religious texts or watching religious posts. Do you guys know how to read Arabic? No, no. Uh, yeah. I'm so I can't I, I can read with the harakat. So uh -huh. harakat is let's just call it notes for our non Muslim. The accents and yeah. yeah. So the, the little notes that yeah, tell yeah. you if it's up or down. Yeah. So I'm pretty good at reading the Quran. And I can also read with Adam, but I struggle. But right, I'm, right. I'm pretty good. At it, right. Right. Yeah, I can read Arabic. I can read the Quran. I can read Alhamdulillah, no yeah. problem. But Same. like you said, if it doesn't have the tashkil on it, yeah. uh, it's like even the other day, there was a McDonald's sign on the highway <laughs> and it said, uh, oh my God, what did it say? It I said, Mac. Babs. I think I did the same one. Yeah. Ba Alif ba Sin. <laughs> Mac Babs. Right? And I'm like, I'm like Mac Babs. <laughs> then the next sign is in English. It's Mac Pops. I'm like, I would have never gotten that on my no. own unless I had the, the English, you know, the English. And then sometimes when they're writing the, مثلاً, like a store, it's called Center Point. So they write it in Arabic. And I'm like, Center Point. What is that? What is that? And then when I, it hits me, I'm like, oh my God, that's so dumb. It's center point, clearly. Oh, so um, they don't have a translation of center point. They're just no, spelling they're just it. Well, the, the majority of stores Correct. do that. The yeah. majority of the stores, they just write whatever's in English. They write it in Arabic. And yeah. that's what I like. But there are some stores, and this is where my Arabic is going to fail me, but let's just say it's called uh, Table. Mm. The store is called Table. They'll write it in Arabic, Tawla, yeah. right? And like, well, that's confusing. Yeah. Like if I'm looking up, do I look up table? Do I look up taula? But yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, most of the stores, yeah, they, well, they, they Karim, do. I quickly wanted to ask you boys. Yeah, of um, course. Do you, just before we end the pod, uh, do you guys have any specific traditions during Ramadan or towards Eid that you guys, just so we can share with our listeners, yeah, of maybe course. what we do a little Ooh, bit listeners, different? listeners, alhamdulillah. <laughs> you want to start to me? Uh, look, um, for me, it's more about withdrawing, right? More about what? Withdrawing. So I tend to withdraw from society. Okay. Right. But I will try to have uh, iftar with family and friends. Uh -huh. Here in the UAE, because I got no family, it's really about some friends. Yeah. yeah. Um, you were just telling me course, yesterday, yeah. I'm like family, bro. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I ain't got friends, now, I got family. Now, now he's pod, saying bro, no right? family. Not in yeah, public, yeah, right? Right? behind the scenes. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's really just trying to go and pray tarawih. You yeah. know, because I'm, look, you know, 
life is busy. Do I go to the mosque? You know, I probably I go on Fridays and little times. Yeah. But during Ramadan, every day if possible. I'm Mashallah. At the mosque, Mashallah. Right? Well, I mean, I will speak for myself if I pass along yeah. to you, Karim. So you obviously asked the question, so you can tell your <laughs> side. So. <laughs> so the thing is, we try to make um, Ramadan fun for our kids. So obviously, I don't expect my four and five year old to fast. But my eldest, Abdul, he's been fasting for the last three years straight, mashallah, mashallah. and he refuses. You know, even if he's sick, he'll push through. Mm. So, mashallah, like, so one of the traditions we do is we try to make it fun. You know, so for example, if he goes to Tarawih with me, then maybe I'll buy him a special dessert. Nice. Right? Yeah. But mostly the tradition that we do when it comes to Eid, so the day, the, the very last day of Ramadan, we, have, we set up like a special a candy table where the kids, my, my son, and my kids, you know, they um, put candy on. They decide what treats they want to put on. They put all of the decorations. So we try to make it fun, like our sort of Christmas time. So that's our little tradition that we just try to make it fun for the kids. And, you know, just so they can stay involved. So they don't feel like the re religion is a burden. Nice. nice. You, I've got so many stories that just came to my mind from that. But I won't tell them all. But I will say, uh, tradition-wise, as Egyptians, right, we do we take a fanus, right? It's a lantern. We put a candle in it. And I, from what my parents tell me in Egypt, they would go around and, and almost almost like a trick or treat with the fanus and people would give them candy and stuff. <laughs> so we used to do that with my dad. We just go around hallo ya hallo Ramadan karim ya hallo. And then he'll give That's us nice, some cash. Man. Yeah, he'll give it's us some nice. cash whatever. So we would do that. We would try to do it every day, but he's like, "No, nah, no, nah, once a week, you know, once a week." <laughs> Look, as an quickly before we end, the one thing as an adult now with a lot of nephews and nieces, particularly in one, I it's have expensive, to say, right? I'd have to say I'd have to say that the day <laughs> there's a line of family <laughs> yeah. <laughs> putting out money and money and money but you're a rich yeah. man you'll give a give thousand then how each one no, well, <laughs> no i need to come to your house with my then. <laughs> no, 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 man. everyone gets 10 and that's it man <laughs> no alhamdulillah inshallah we'll uh, obviously the next few weeks as we're going to the ramadan we'll still do uh the podcast so we'll sure. talk more about um you know what our experience was like back in the west what it's like here um the differences the pros the cons um because yep. i'm sure we can talk about it forever um but uh inshallah ramadan kareem karmus to you guys uh ramadan mubarak and you too. Uh, you too, can't wait you too, to have iftar with you guys and uh, you look amazing Thank and you. inshallah me and ali next time will come in our yeah uh, and we'll match you man yeah hopefully i don't get the mismatch and i'm coming in western gear <laughs> <laughs> he's wearing like tight shorts and a halter top <laughs> well, i think also do you want to wish our listeners uh, ramadan karim too no no it's only for you guys it's only for you guys. <laughs> no to any of our muslim uh, any of our muslim listeners and non-muslim listeners as well ramadan mubarak to everybody that means happy ramadan uh we thank you guys so much for tuning in this was another episode of the task cast live from dubai uh don't forget to subscribe like follow us everywhere and uh we can't wait to see you guys next time assalamu alaikum